Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, San Antonio police looking for those responsible for a murder. The latest on the investigation. President Trump issuing new orders to make desperately needed equipment for health care workers. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam. It's not a very pretty start to your morning. Mike, standing by with details. What is pretty is it's Friday. Yay! It is Friday. It is April 3rd. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here today, yeah. David. Yeah, it's, it's just not nice out there. I saw lots of puddles. The roads are wet. Saw a lot of rain yesterday, too. And we're going to see a whole lot more rain before it's all said and done. And things could get nasty later on this afternoon, uh -oh. too. So, yeah. And then big front moving on through here, which we usually don't say in the first couple of days. So is it going to cool down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be cold and wet tomorrow. What? It's going to be cold tomorrow. Ooh. By the way, this is the anniversary of the cold of the uh, latest freeze ever. And we're not going to be freezing, by the way, but... This is the anniversary of it. Well, you have me intrigued, Mr. So, Osterhage. Yeah, uh, starting off, and it's very, very mild. The roads are still damp. Picked up about a third of an inch of rain yesterday, and potentially a whole lot more, especially in about the next uh, 36 to 48 hours. So it's kind of murky looking out there. We do have a few light little showers that are showing up on radar right now. So if you are heading out the door this morning, uh, do take it easy because the roads are definitely on the wet side, and they're going to stay pretty wet throughout the day. There's also a little bit of fog, some reduced visibility, not bad. It's not any pea soup fog, anything like that. Temperatures are extremely warm. We made it to the upper 70s yesterday, and we really haven't cooled off, obviously, all that much. So mid to upper 60s, low 70s as of right now. However, I'm going for, for 60 by about 5 o'clock because a strong front's moving on through here. It's below freezing right now. I'm going to show you this a little bit later on in long weather, but up in the panhandle, it's below freezing. There's a really, really potent front moving on through here. We will have showers and storms developing, and uh, some of those storms are definitely going to be on the uh, severe side later on this afternoon. As a matter of fact, Storm Prediction Center still has us in the slight risk. As a matter of fact, it looks like they've kind of expanded that just a little bit, the slight risk, which is basically number two on the scale. Uh, so with uh, severe storms, high winds and hail being the biggest threats and can't rule out a tornado there. That's not very likely, though, in this situation. That's going to be for this afternoon, maybe early evening hours, and then perhaps a lull in the action into the overnight hours, but then tomorrow we are looking at maybe some heavy rain. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. All right. Well, no accidents right now on the roadways. A little bit of construction in around in and around the city uh, right here. 281 and winding way. The usual construction on those northbound lanes. The access road right there going on to 1604 eastbound. Hopefully this will be done by around 5 36 when that sun comes up. So uh, this is all we have to worry about right now. Uh, let's take a look at other parts of the city because the roadways are slick. 35 and Randolph. Look, you can see some uh, the, that road right there just a little wet. So please be careful driving 1604 and Braun on the northwest side. Same. Uh, you can see the glare off those lights there. 151 and 410 uh, may have a little construction right there in the middle. I don't know. And 90 and Medeo Creek uh, as well. So traffic's light. Please be careful. It's wet. Drive very slowly so you can get home to work safely. All right, Dave Leslie, back to you. Thank you, sir. Here in San Antonio, cases of COVID-19 have now risen above 300. It comes when we learn of more cases at a nursing home and a change in testing criteria. And for the first time, numbers of community transmission rank higher. And uh, the rest of the in the rest of the cat than the rest of the categories, I should say. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the pandemic is being driven by people who may feel fine and not show any symptoms. Take a look at the numbers. There are 313 confirmed cases in Bear County, which is up by 82 since the last check. The number of deaths remains at nine. Out of the more than 300 cases, at least 72 people have been hospitalized and 47 have recovered. And here's the latest look at the trend in the cases here in Bear County. The line graph showing the rise in cases since we had our first case back on March 13th. Well, a local restaurant that has been selling household essentials amid the COVID-19 pandemic has added a new pop-up shop on the north side. Mia Familia de Mitera pop-up shop is now open at the Realm. They offer an array of items like toilet paper, fresh produce, sanitizing wipes, and more. The full kitchen is closed, but daily patio grilling specials are available, along with curbside ordering and pickup. The manager says it's the best they can do to help out the community. 
anything that has to do with the community, we're, we're, we're there. In this case, uh, we're trying to bring all the first need items, uh, first necess necessity, you know, such as toilet paper, items that are troubles getting at the store. We have them here. Operation hours are the same as Meet Mercado pop-up shop every day, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we'll try to get the exact, we just said the north side, we didn't give an exact location. Get that for so you. So we need to get that. Meanwhile, the death toll from the coronavirus rising around the country, but with the federal stockpile of masks and ventilators nearly depleted, the president now stepping up the Defense Production Act. He is ordering companies to manufacture those desperately needed supplies. ABC's Inez de la Cuatera is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the number of infections in New York approaching 100,000, makeshift morgues being built around New York City. The governor warns it could be another month before the state reaches its peak number of cases, but ventilators could run out in less than a week. If a person comes in and needs a ventilator and you don't have a ventilator, the person dies. President Trump now announcing he's stepping up the Defense Production Act, ordering companies to manufacture those desperately needed ventilators, though FEMA tells Congress they won't be available until late June. We have over 100,000 being built right now or soon to be started. Trump also using the Defense Production Act to push the company 3M to produce more face masks. Healthcare workers around the country starting to feel defenseless. Every day when I go to work, I feel like a sheep going to slaughter. My colleagues and I are writing our last will and testament. To stop the spread of the virus, New York is now following Los Angeles, urging people to wear non-medical masks or face coverings in public, but insisting... We don't want you to use... Uh, the kinds of masks that our first responders need, that our health care workers need. And soon, the White House is expected to issue similar guidance for more Americans, but with a thing. warning. The most important thing is the social distancing. And we don't want people to get an artificial sense of protection because they're behind a mask. When it comes to financial help, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says Americans will start to see direct deposit relief payments from the government in the next two weeks. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. In other news here in town this morning, San Antonio police investigating a murder and are still looking for those responsible. The crime happened in the 3800 block of San Fernando Road back on March 20th. Police say 29-year-old Ricardo Aguirre was found dead in a car after it crashed into a tree. SAPD says that after investigating, they found he had been shot multiple times. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get up to a $5,000 reward. Now to an Amber Alert. The Dallas Police Department is looking for two children, three-year-old Ariana Gutierrez and two-year-old Alaya Gutierrez. Law enforcement officials believe these children are in grave or immediate danger. Police are also looking for two suspects, two Hispanic males, in connection with the abduction. The suspects are driving a gold 2008 Hyundai Sonata with a Texas license plate number of JWM8413. The suspects were last seen in Dallas. If you have any information, call the Dallas Police Department. It is now 438 and 70 degrees. Still ahead, we are in an area where many of us suffer from allergies. But how do you tell the difference between allergies and signs of the coronavirus? And also coming up next, the U.S. Navy captain has been relieved of command after more than 100 sailors aboard an aircraft carrier have tested positive for coronavirus. And live cam giving us a look outside. Hang on to your umbrella, everybody. You're going to need it. Mike is coming up with details. And welcome back. It is 441. In your morning headlines, the commander of the U.S. aircraft carrier that was hit by a coronavirus outbreak has been relieved of command. Captain Brett Crozier is no longer commanding officer of the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Earlier this week, the captain wrote a memo warning the Navy that the action was needed to save lives on board. Navy officials say he sent the memo over an unsecured system, adding to the chances that it would be leaked to the media. The ship is in port in Guam. So far, 114 sailors from the aircraft carrier have tested positive for coronavirus. Wall Street will be starting off on a positive note this morning after stocks shook off a two-day losing streak Thursday on positive news from the energy sector. Oil prices surged 35 percent after Saudi Arabia called for an urgent meeting between OPEC and Russia. President Trump tweeted he thinks both nations will slash output, ending their brutal price war. It was also good enough news to offset 6.6 .6 million new unemployment claims. 
That number boosts the unemployment rate to a record 3,000 percent since early March. The U.S. automobile industry is the latest to be impacted by the outbreak. Car sales fell sharply in March. Fiat Chrysler announced a 10 percent drop in first quarter sales. General Motors reported a 7 percent drop and Toyota fell 9 percent. They blame the setbacks on the stay at home orders and economic struggles for potential buyers. Your time now is 442 with 70 degrees outside. Still coming up, how some big name celebrities, including Oprah, are dedicating their time to help families in need during the coronavirus outbreak. And while lower gas prices can be beneficial to many, up next to look at how the state's oil industry is facing what could be a big problem. Welcome back. It's 445. Millions of Americans are experiencing seasonal allergy symptoms. But how do you tell the difference between allergies and signs of the coronavirus? ABC's Deborah Roberts has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a health concern for so many. How to know the difference between seasonal allergies and the early symptoms of COVID-19? <coughs> Experts say about 20 million Americans suffer from allergies every year, and the season could last for four months. This map highlighting the parts of the country that are most challenging places to live with allergies. About 90% of patients with COVID-19 will present with a fever. The other main differentiating factor is sneezing. Sneezing is very common in allergies. It has not been reported in covid if you're worried or unsure of your symptoms, we would recommend contacting your doctor. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you all the important differences to look out for. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live with what we are now learning about the coronavirus. With your GMA First Look, I'm Deborah Roberts, ABC News, New York. The impact of the coronavirus being felt all the way to the gas pump. While cheap gas would normally be good news, these are not normal times. That's true. As 12 on your side, Marilyn Moritz reports, the oil industry and the state facing a big challenge. It's a free fall at the pump. Gas prices are tanking. It's pretty cheap. It's cheaper than it's been in a minute. Cheaper than it's been in more than four years. It's 149. It's the cheapest it's been in as long as I can remember, but still, everyone's too scared to go anywhere. One look at traffic, you can understand how oil supply is way out of whack with demand, sending prices into a dive. The average gallon in San Antonio is now 163, a 37 cent drop in the past month, a whopping 69 cents less than one year ago. 119 a gallon. That's the cheapest price we found in town. As for what's ahead, AAA says we can expect at least another 25 cent drop this month. It's good for the consumers, but it's bad for companies, especially the oil companies. It may be devastating for oil companies, with oil prices plummeting to their lowest in 18 years and painful for Texas. The state budget could face a gaping hole from lost oil production taxes. How deep the pain depends on how long the pandemic lasts. I just hope it's over as soon as possible so that they can get back to work. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It is 448, it's 70 degrees. And the roads messy. are wet, yeah, which means it's it could be a very busy morning for Officer Solis. Nick? Uh, oh, Leslie, I hope not. But yes, the roads are wet, so a couple of pointers. Make sure you keep your distance, slow down, and avoid heavy braking out there. We don't want no one skidding on the roadways. All right, still working on this construction here. 281 and Winding Way, usual construction for Friday morning. Hopefully it's out of there by 5.30 a.m. Let's check uh, some other place in the city. We got 410 at Broadway. That's looking good. 37 at Hackberry. I'm uh, looking great. 10 in Proband. Very light traffic there. Uh, what else we have here? Let's see. 10 in Austin Highway is looking good. Uh, not, no cars on the roadway there at all. And uh, 35 in Randolph. The, like I said, just slick, slick roadways. Please be careful on your way to work. Oh, Mike. So this is a uh going to be sticking around for a few days. Yes, uh, we have rain really through the middle of next week, but today is things are going to get best way to say it's going to be kind of a wild day, but it's going to be later today that we have to worry about it. Correct. It's just going to be some uh, scattered rain this morning and then uh, more showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. Now we picked up about a third of an inch of rain yesterday, which obviously was just fantastic and there's a whole lot more. And in some cases uh, there may be too much rain, but a nice view of the Tower of the Americas and yep, 
there's some some rain and there's some rain out there right now as well and as you can see the roads over there by the airport 410 is definitely on the uh, the damp side and just a few uh, kind of light showers that are working their way up to the north as of right now 70 degrees 66 up the road toward Bernie 68 Canyon Lake and 69 in Floresville and these temperatures obviously are way above normal. There is a ton of humidity out there as expected with dew points well up in the upper 60s and low 70s, which is going to be feeding some of these showers. That is going to be changing though later on today. So we stay very warm and humid through the afternoon and then here comes the front moving on through here and that pulls down this drier air. So the humidity is going to be dropping down considerably. Winds will shift around. But it's not one of those situations where when you have a front come through, it just sweeps everything out and clears everything out of here. We're still going to keep clouds. We're still going to keep a lot of rain around here, despite the fact that we have this lower humidity and also some cooler temperatures. Now, once that front moves on through, we do have the threat for some severe weather. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. You know, an outside chance for a tornado is just a mention of it. You can't completely rule it out, but it's going to be the high winds and the hail primarily. It's going to be later on this afternoon. Now, here's what the computer model looks like. This, we've got the lights, scattered showers around here through the morning hours. Now, watch as this line moves on down through. That's the front. That's going to be touching off the potentially severe storms late this afternoon in toward dinner time and going into this evening. Then this one computer model has things almost kind of settling down just a little bit going into the nighttime hours. Different computer model about the same solution. Here's right around late afternoon and that's when we have the potential for some of those severe storms. Things settle just a little bit in the overnight hours, but then really start to fire up again throughout the afternoon and that's when we can see potentially some heavy rain around here. This is what What's coming. It's 28 degrees right now in Amarillo, 35 in Lubbock, and all that is going to be working its way down through here. So we'll make it into the upper 70s by late this afternoon. However, that's going to that colder air continues to move on in here. I'm going to go for about uh, 60 by five o'clock this afternoon. Uh, there's different computer models with different solutions, but there's one of them that's really, really cold, kind of easing that a little bit. But I think by noon, 76 degrees, and then later on this afternoon, going for 60 about five o'clock. So we'll just drop off as that front moves on through here and get even colder. 47 tomorrow morning, only 57 for high temperature tomorrow. And that's when we can see some potentially heavy rain in the uh, about midday time tomorrow. Still some showers on Palm Sunday. We start to warm up a little bit and then back to the 80s. Won't be 842. Oops. Check your work, kids, when you're working on 842. Uh, Michael, that was a, that was done on purpose. Uh -huh. to, can just, we pick which two numbers we want? Like, to, can we do either 84 or 42? Just to point out to the kids that you need to check your work. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that's the so it, it was a, a learning opportunity. So learn, it, that was just a, a lesson that I threw in there. Homeschooling right kids. there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I will be back up in the mid-80s by uh, next week. But 57 actually, and heavy rain tomorrow. Yeah. Wowza. You could almost crank up the fireplace tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You could. 47 when you wake up. Yeah. I'm doing it, David. I'm going to live dangerously. You go, girlfriend. going to do it. A glass of wine in a fireplace. Well, probably not in the morning. Probably coffee in the fireplace. Uh, well, morning to you is like now. I mean, you can do it. Well, like it is now, yes. It's morning to everybody know, right now. I mean, <laughs> Angelico in the coffee to start things off. Oh, my God. Uh, it's Friday. You can tell that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming up next, you're looking for something new to stream. Disney Plus debuting a nature documentary narrated by the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. Oprah putting her money where other people's mouths are, donating $10 million to help those hit hard by COVID-19. A million dollars will go to help launch America's Food Fund in partnership with Leonardo DiCaprio, Apple, and more. The fund, co-founded by chef Jose Andres, will help feed local communities and has already received $12 million in total pledges. One of the most anticipated movies of the summer is now moving because of the coronavirus shutdown. Your reputation precedes you. I have to admit I wasn't expecting an invitation back. Top Gun Maverick flying from June 24th to December 23rd as theaters remain closed across the country with no word when they'll open or if crowds will gather when they do. Top Gun studio Paramount also announcing that the sequel to A Quiet Place, which was supposed to open March 20th, will now debut September 24th. 
New on streaming today, check out Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, narrating a nature documentary. A 1,000 mile journey across Africa on an adventure that will change their lives. Elephant is out now on Disney Plus, which is also debuting Dolphin Reef, narrated by Oscar winner Natalie Portman. And happy birthday to Eddie Murphy, the comic legend is 59 today, while actor and game show host Alec Baldwin is 62. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It is 457 and 70 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, look at why health experts are saying Texas could be the next hot spot for the flare up in the coronavirus cases. Plus, country music legend Dolly Parton kicking off her YouTube bedtime reading series for kids. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, Texas could be the next hot spot for COVID-19 cases. More on what federal health officials are saying. Plus how local volunteers are doing their part by helping out those staying at the Ronald McDonald House. Outside with live cam, it's messy right now. It's gonna get messier throughout the day. Good morning, it is Friday, April 3rd. It is Friday and that's fantastic, but yes. the best news of all, everybody, you're gonna need like a jacket on Saturday. Not just an umbrella, a jacket. Maybe a, maybe a, like a, a coat. A big parka kind of keep you warm and dry. I don't know if we go parka, I'm but par it's going to be that. It's a little thing. extreme. I mean, who'd, who'd have thought we'd be saying bone chilling kind of cold because it's going to be wet and it's going to be colder tomorrow. Now, this morning we're starting off. It is very warm out there. Warm and humid temperatures are in the upper 60s and low 70s way, way above normal, needless to say. And there's a ton of humidity, of course. There's a little bit of uh, some reduced visibility, some fog, and it's also that mist that's kind of hanging around here. And take a look at radar right now. There's a little bit of rain that's showing up. Of course, we picked up just over a third of an inch officially out there at the airport. There were a couple of thunderstorms that dumped some pretty good uh, showers uh, yesterday, some pretty good rainfall amounts. So we've got these uh, scattered uh, light showers over basically on the west side of Bear County, over in toward Medina County. Everything's sliding up to the north, maybe a moderate to downpour here and there and we'll continue to keep these showers around. They will become more widespread. They'll start to sort of fill in and become a little bit more pronounced, a little heavier uh, later on the, this morning and this afternoon. Three miles visibility at the airport, two up the road toward Bernie, three Casterville. So it's not really a big deal as far as reduced visibility, but just watch because the roads are sort of slippery out there. And again, these temperatures are even warmer than what they were yesterday. So we'll have showers. My, I'm doing good with the computer this morning. Mild this morning, not mild. Uh, storms, some potentially severe later on this afternoon, and then it's going to be turning colder. We've got a very potent front moving on through here, and that's going to be coming in just about dinner time, and temperatures are going to drop down. Right now, it is below freezing up in the panhandle. We won't get that cold, but it's a significant front moving on in here. Cold and wet tomorrow going for only the mid to upper 50s for a high temperature and potentially some heavy rain around the area tomorrow. And then going into next week, more rain, but we will start to warm up. And we do have that chance for severe weather today. Storm Prediction Center has us under the slight risk. All of the area under the slight risk. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. We'll uh, sort out all the numbers and take a look at maybe how much rain we can get coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, we're off to a good start this morning. I know it's wet and rainy outside, but no accidents. So if you are on the way to work, expect a smooth ride. Just be careful because like I said, those roadways are slick. Please be careful. Keep your distance on the roadway. No heavy braking and uh, just please uh, be very careful. All right, let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on thir uh, 35 southbound or coming from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, it's 16 minutes from there. And then from 1604 to downtown, you got a 12 minute commute. Pretty good times there. All right, let's take a look outside. 1604 and Braun, that's not too bad there. Um, one car on the roadway, 151 and 410, looking very good as well. Uh, I know we had some, maybe some construction there earlier. I'm not sure anymore. 90 and Medeo Creek, same. Very little cars on the roadway. Things are looking good. And 410 and 151 uh, still looks good. So right now, traffic's very light, just a little bit wet out there. Please be careful driving to work. Dave Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. As the number of coronavirus cases tops 1 million worldwide, ABC News is reporting that Texas is expected to become one of the next hot spots for the disease. There are currently more than 4,600 confirmed cases and at least 70 deaths. 
Governor Greg Abbott says the rate of people testing positive for coronavirus is still less than 10 percent of the total number of people being tested. The governor also addressing when Texas is expected to see a peak in cases. They are anticipating that the peak will be in the United States in about two weeks. From modeling that we are seeing, it looks like the peak in Texas may be about a week or 10 days after that. One reason for that is that it, be, it began later in Texas than it did in places like Washington State or California or New York. That said, if, if you look at the types of practices that have been taking place in San Antonio, as well as all of the metro areas in the state of Texas, you, you will see that we've had good distancing practices employed for about two weeks now. The governor providing us another update this afternoon at 2.30 from the state capitol. We, of course, will be carrying that for you live here on KZ12 and online. And closer to home, surrounding counties continue to report an uptick in cases. DeWitt County has just confirmed two new cases. That brings their total to six. Comal County reported an increase, a total of 12 cases so far. Guadalupe County has at least 20 cases. Atascosa County, two. Bandera County continues to report zero cases. You can see your county's case list on KSAT.com. And in Bear County, we are tracking how new cases of COVID-19 are spread about the area right now. Two zip codes now have the most COVID-19 cases in our area, both 78209 and 78245 on the west side have between 13 and 16 cases. The darker the red, the more COVID-19 cases in that area. Those with a tan colored shade have the least amount of cases and areas shaded in gray have no confirmed instances of the virus. Over on the east side, you'll notice that zip code 78203 is grayed out, but it is surrounded by areas with positive cases. Meanwhile, volunteers are delivering food to those staying at the Ronald McDonald House, where families with sick children are staying. The program allows those kids to stay with their families and near the hospitals they need. San Antonio has four Ronald McDonald homes. We're one of the um, six cities in the entire U.S. that has a need for four homes. And so we have two here in the medical center, one downtown close to the medical complex, and one in the Santa Rosa Hospital. Typical deliveries feed dozens of families. They also include happy meals, of course, for the children. United States, of course, bracing for an increase in coronavirus cases. And as each day passes, more hot spots are emerging. ABC's Kimberly Brooks has details on that. New York is no doubt the epicenter of COVID-19 in the U.S., but as each day passes, a new reality, more hot spots emerging. What changes the curve is a new Detroit, a new Chicago, a new New Orleans, a new Colorado. We're watching very carefully because we see that you can go from this to this very quickly. Why the spikes? It comes down to who was still moving around in recent days. This New York Times map shows the country color coded by who was allowed to travel just last week. Those gray areas are places where stay at home orders were already in place. But those areas of red? Business as usual, from state officials late to restrict travel. Georgia finally issued its stay at home order Wednesday. The governor making this shocking statement yesterday. What we've been telling people from directives from the CDC for weeks now that if you start feeling bad, stay home. Uh, those individuals could have been infecting people before they ever felt bad. Well, we didn't know that until the last 24 hours. But the CDC warned about that risk months ago. One rural area of Georgia is erupting with cases. It just shows you, it, you know, you're not safe in rural America, small urban. This isn't just for the big cities. Uh, it's for all of the United States. And in Louisiana, this sobering chart showing cases soaring to nearly 10,000, a 42% jump in one day. In Volusia County, Florida, northeast of Orlando, beaches were still open until last night. Florida has reported a 27% increase in its death toll in one day. In growing concern in Colorado, the governor writing a letter to Vice President Pence saying the crisis is far worse than he imagined and saying Colorado's death rate is rising faster than any other state. It is now 509 and 70 degrees. Still ahead, country music legend Dolly Parton kicks off her YouTube bedtime reading stories. We're going to tell you how it's doing so far. And if you need a few more shows to watch at home, HBO offering some of their services for free. We'll tell you which shows are now available to everybody.
And like Cam giving us a look outside, we're in for a wet few days, everybody. Be ready. In your morning consumer headlines, employees working at Lowe's are getting a pay raise. The home improvement chain says workers will see a $2 an hour pay increase. The increase is temporary just for the month of April. It applies to all of the company's full-time, part-time, and seasonal hourly workers who are employed at Lowe's stores, its contact centers, and its fulfillment facilities. The company's CEO says it's a thank you to workers who are working during this pandemic. HBO making it a little easier for Americans to stay at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. The network offering 500 hours of its programming for free for a limited time. It's all part of its hashtag stay home box office. The promotion starts Friday. It includes shows like The Sopranos, Wire and Veep. Some documentaries and Warner Brothers movies will also be available. HBO, Warner Brothers and CNN are all part of the Warner Media family. It has been another week of coronavirus coverage, but not all of it bad news. No, we like good news, too. Yeah. If you visited our website, you may have noticed some other lighthearted content. Our Eric Hernandez gives us a KSAT.com Week in Review. Easter is fast approaching, and this year's celebration will be different. In case you need to venture out to a store, KSAT.com has a list of big chains that will be closed on Easter Sunday. Businesses closed include HEB, Costco, Sam's Club, and Target. Businesses open include CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, and Whole Foods. Some good news in San Antonio. In March, Animal Care Services says more than 600 pets were adopted and an additional 118 pets left with foster families. The good news doesn't end there. More than 900 other animals left with local rescue partners. To view pets that are available for adoption, check out the ACS website. Right now is the perfect time of year for wildflower pictures. If you live near any, we want to see your photos. You can upload them to our wildflower gallery. Already we've seen some amazing pics. San Antonio artist Rafael Gonzalez is getting some laughs after posting his rendition of Loteria cards called Pandemic Loteria. He says he created the cards to bring a sense of comfort, family, and fun during the coronavirus pandemic. And finally, April Fools! The San Antonio Zoo played a prank on San Antonio Media Wednesday, including us here at KSAT 12. We got fooled into thinking they actually took their elephants to the San Antonio River for a swim. FYI, this did not happen, and the elephants are doing well at the San Antonio Zoo. For more on all these stories, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Oh, I needed that, that laugh. That is funny. Good stuff. That's for hanging out at the San Antonio River. <laughs> I love, I love it. it. Your time now is 515 and it's 70 degrees outside. Still ahead, a country music star given a real pre-race concert ahead of this weekend's virtual NASCAR Pro Invitational. And next, Amazon has decided to no longer sell N95 masks to the public. We'll tell you why. Capital One Quicksilver card does not need a dog and pony show. Quicksilver is simple. It's unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase with no annual fee. No need to jump through any crazy hoops. Will someone tell Fido he can cool it with the hoops? The Capital One Quicksilver card. What's in your wallet? They're dropping balloons. Yes, the first word to any adventure. But when allergies and congestion strike, take Allegra D, a non-drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant. So you can always say yes to putting your true colors on display. Say yes to Allegra D. Michael, you're a singer. Buble is the sparkling water. Sure is. Bubbly sparkling water. Crack a smile. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon limits the sale of some coronavirus-related products. N95 masks are no longer being offered to the public. They will only be sold to hospitals, government agencies, and some other groups through a special section of Amazon's website. And Amazon is stepping up efforts to keep coronavirus from spreading through its workforces. Staffers at warehouses and Whole Foods supermarkets will receive face masks. They'll also have their temperatures checked. And Dolly Parton has premiered her YouTube series, Good Night with Dolly, where she'll read children's books at bedtime. Puff, puff.
puff, chug, chug, went the little blue engine. I think I can, 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 I think I can. Miss Dolly kicked off the series by reading a classic, The Little Engine That Could. And those are your tech bites. Have a great weekend. I think I can toss the traffic. I think I can. I think I know I can. Nick, how's it looking out there? That was good. Uh, we're still looking good. No accidents. Uh, construction very light. A lot of green on the screen, which is always good. But uh, still, roadways are still very slick. Please be careful. We want everyone getting to work safely. Uh, make sure you uh, keep that distance from the car in front of you. No heavy braking. And just please be very careful. Drive times eastbound 151 to 1604 to 90. Nine minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound, or, or I'm sorry, east, yeah, eastbound Highway 90 to 1604 to 35, 11 minutes, really good times there. All right, let's take a look outside. 10 in La Quintera, still looking very wet on the roadways. Uh, 10 and 1604, look at that puddle right there on that uh, west eastbound lane. Uh, 10 at UTSA Boulevard, so, I mean, still very, very uh, slick, so just be careful. Mike, we still got some rain in the area? Oh yeah, we do still have a few uh, showers out there. Now this picture obviously was taken a couple of days ago because of the blue skies out there, which we're not going to be seeing for at least about a week or so. But wow, look at the blue bonnets and boy, the wildflowers and your uh, your gardens, your lawns are going to get a nice drink of water over the next couple of days. We picked up about a third of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport yesterday. And uh, the road, there's a little bit of sheen on it. And you can see sort of that uh, that hazy look out there. We do have a slight, uh, slight bit of reduced visibility more on that in a second and there are a couple of uh, light showers being picked up on radar not much there may actually be some mist out there as well but this is going to start to fill in throughout the day and rain will start to pick up a little bit more as well three miles visibility out at the airport same thing up the road toward bernie so nothing real pea soup as far as fog is concerned it's just because of some of the uh, the rain out there we have the reduced visibility it's warm it's very humid Temperatures in the mid upper 60s, low 70s. Dew points as expected are way up there. So yeah, you notice the humidity when you step outside, but that's all going to be changing later on today. So we stay very humid throughout most of the afternoon. Then here comes the front moving on through here, and that's going to pull down much, much drier air. But we'll still have now and colder air too. I mean, it's still going to feel kind of damp in the next couple of days, even though these uh, dew point temperatures will definitely be dropping down as we go into tonight and then over the weekend. <laughs> What's interesting is as the front moves on through here, it's a classic kind of spring situation with two opposing air masses. So that's why we've got a good chance for some uh, showers and thunderstorms, some potentially severe storms with high winds and hail being the biggest threats, and that covers most all of the area, the slight risk, according to the uh, Storm Prediction Center. Here's uh, one of two computer models. Scattered showers around throughout the rest of the morning and then going into the afternoon. Then as the front starts to work its way down here, we're going to see some of those uh, stronger thunderstorms develop, and that will be basically through about dinner time or early evening. Little break in the action, then we get into tomorrow. Now, this computer model has about the same solution for today, with the stronger thunderstorms about dinner time late afternoon. Tomorrow we'll still have some rain and it looks like by roughly noon it's really going to start to pick up around here. Uh, some we're going to be seeing one two inch rainfall amounts kind of widespread and then there's going to be the heavier pockets on top of that. That's a potential today with some of the thunderstorms, but I think it's a better chance to see some uh, heavier rain right around midday tomorrow. 76 degrees today at noon showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here. We will continue to peak about uh, going for 78 for a high, but I think by dinner time or late afternoon, once that front moves on through here, we're going to be down to 60 degrees and then continue to drop down from there. We'll make it down to 47 tomorrow morning, only 57. Some computer models actually have us only at 50 tomorrow afternoon. Others are a little bit warmer. I'm kind of splitting the difference with that, but it will definitely be cold tomorrow and potentially some heavy rain and then more rain through basically the middle part of next week and we'll finally make it back up into the uh, mid 80s once we get into the middle part of next week. I could do without the hail and the high winds, but the rain. You don't get to choose. I know. You get what you get and you like it. Yes, ma'am. If you are looking forward to seeing the sequel to the 1980s <laughs> hit Top Gun, you're going to have a wait for a little longer. More on how long the coronavirus has delayed that film. Oh, no.
Another big movie is zooming away from coronavirus closed theaters. Paramount has yanked Top Gun Maverick starring Tom Cruise from its original launch date of June 24th. It'll now open December 23rd. Paramount also announced A Quiet Place Part 2, pulled on short notice from its March 20th debut, will open in theaters September 4th. A, a real show for virtual NASCAR. Country star Justin Moore will give a pre-race concert ahead of this weekend's eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational, where NASCAR drivers compete on a virtual Bristol Motor Speedway. Moore will rev up the online audience starting at 12.30 p.m. Eastern this Sunday. A multicolor coat to wear. Joseph's coat was elegant. The cup was fine. Fans of Andrew Lloyd Webber can get their fix at home. The new YouTube channel, The Shows Must Go On, will feature a series of Webber's stage musicals streaming free for 48 hours each, beginning Friday with Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Getting my front row seat in Hollywood, I'm David Dan. I like the fact that these companies are allowing people to watch stuff for free. You don't have to keep paying for this. Well, especially because so many people are out of work right now. And exactly. I mean, it, it is. It's the good side of humanity. Nice to see. Mm -hmm. 528, 70 degrees. As the medical world deals with a constantly increasing number of infected patients, supplies, including masks, are running very low in some places. Plus, Duncan is hoping a little more sweetness can help people's morale right now. What they're doing to help keep folks in a good mood. Oh, sugar always does that, doesn't it? Hey, good we, morning, everybody. What are we doing? I, I will lead the ship, and you just okay. come along for the ride. How about that? Captain First of all, it's boat. Friday. Okay, got that. What's the date? It's April 3rd. It is, and it's 531 in the morning. Okay. And we are going to check in with Officer Solis in a minute. But first. Oh, first. We first, check in with. Mike. Good job. Well, he walked from here to over there. That's he's, 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 he's always usually, usually directionally challenged. Four shots, so I, I, was, I know. That's why I went, where everybody go. You, so anyway, hey, if you are uh, heading out this morning, uh, this is what you're going to run into. It's kind of murky looking. As you can see, a little bit of a fuzz around some of the lights out there at the airport. The road is damp. There's a reflection there on uh, 410 from some of the rain that we had yesterday. And then also because we still have a little bit of uh, light rain around the area this morning. Not much and a lot of it may be in the form of some, uh, some mist out there, which is too late to be picked up on radar, but we do still have some of these showers and everything's kind of sliding up to the north. This is going to start to fill in as we go through the morning and into later on this afternoon, and we'll also have uh, probably some pretty good thunderstorms as well. More on that in a second. Temperatures are way, way above where they should be. We're in the mid upper 60s, obviously low 70s, a lot of humidity out there as well. Oak is up. It went up again. Remember, it dropped off by about midweek and then it's been slowly, slowly going up. Mold is on the moderate side and that is going to be going up as we go into the next couple of days, just given all of the rain that we have out there and the moisture in the forecast. So showers mild this morning, storms, some will be severe later on today. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. Then a front's moving on through here and this is a doozy of a front, especially for this time of year. Much colder temperatures will be dropping down a good probably 15 degrees or even more in some cases from mid to late afternoon into the early evening hours. And then tomorrow it's going to be cold and wet, potentially some heavy rain, especially about midday. And then on Sunday and going into next week, still have some more rain, but we will be warming up a little bit. We get the weekend sorted out in just a couple of minutes and the timing on that front coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Hope everyone's having a great morning. All right. Snow, no accidents on the roadway. Always a good sign on a Friday. A uh, little bit of construction out there according to the, the auto populate map, but from what I see on Transit Guide, there's no uh, construction left, so that's good too. Let's take a look outside at the Trans Guide. 10 in Hildebrand was looking good. 10 at La Quintera. Uh, very little cars on the roadway. Still traffic still very light. 10 in Loop 16 of War. The same. Look pretty good there. Uh, let's see what else we have here. 10 and UTSA Boulevard is all 10 right now is looking good, but the roadways are still slick. Make sure you slow your speed down. And just be careful. We want everyone getting to work safely. All right, Dave, Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, more than a million cases of the novel coronavirus worldwide, according to Johns Hopkins University. As San Diego John Lawrence reports, nearly a quarter of that total is here in the United States, where some states are in need of supplies. 
The Trump administration says it'll soon release nationwide recommendations on wearing face masks during the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't think they'll be mandatory because some people don't want to do that. But uh, if people want it, as an example on the masks, if people want it to wear them, they can. Some officials support the idea of people covering up. It's more not to protect you from getting infected, but to protect a person from getting infected from you. Others, like the World Health Organization, stress masks should be prioritized for healthcare workers. These are people who are putting their lives on the line to help us, uh, to care for other people, and they must be protected. As the medical world deals with a constantly increasing number of infected patients, supplies are running low in some places. At the current burn rate, we have about six days uh, of ventilators in our stockpile. New York is hardest hit with the most cases in the nation, but other states are also in need. We are continuing to demand that this president step up and use his power and authority to help people in New Jersey and across this nation. The president says the states could have helped their own cause by stocking up in advance. It's like one of those things. They waited. They didn't want to spend the money because they thought this would never happen. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Meanwhile, the Department of Defense is on a grim mission. Officials are in the process of collecting 100,000 body bags used for victims of the pandemic. According to a member of the DOD, about half of the pouches are already available and the other 50,000 will come from existing supplies. President Trump says that even if federal guidelines are followed exactly, there could be anywhere between 100 to 240,000 fatalities linked to the disease. A woman is in serious condition after she was hit by a vehicle late last night. It happened just after 11 p.m. at the intersection of Roosevelt Avenue and Mission Road on the city's south side. Police say the woman was not responsive after she was hit and was taken to the hospital. SAPD says they are still investigating after witnesses saw a white vehicle drive away from the scene. Also new this morning, San Antonio police are looking for possible suspects in a shooting that happened overnight on the southwest side. According to police, it happened at the Caltech Mobile Home Park, which is in the 4000 block of Southwest Military Drive. An officer talked to the victim after he showed up at a hospital. The victim was taken to SAMHSA in critical condition. SAPD is trying to figure out why that shooting happened. It's 536 at 70 degrees. Still ahead as more than 275,000 Texans apply for unemployment. The governor is encouraging everyone not to give up. And also coming up next, more than 400,000 nursing home employees across the country are pleading for federal help, saying long-term living facilities are not getting the same attention as hospitals. And live cam giving us a look outside. It's going to be a wet commute this morning if you do have to get out and about. Actually, it's going to be wet for the next several days, but it's also going to get cold. Mike has details. Welcome back. It's 20 minutes away from 6 o'clock. Hospital workers in many areas now pleading for help, saying the lack of equipment is putting them in danger. And now nursing homes across the country are also demanding more help. ABC's Mona, Mona rather, Kosar Abdi is the latest. Please help us. We need your help. This morning, pleas for help from the front lines where healthcare workers say the lack of protective gear is putting their lives at risk. Why are we asking nurses to enter rooms with reused masks? Doctors and nurses in New York say they're being told to reuse not only critical masks, but everyday supplies like gowns. And it's not just hospital workers dealing with massive shortages. The union representing 400,000 nursing home employees across the country has issued a plea for federal help, saying long-term living facilities are not getting the same attention as hospitals, calling themselves the forgotten front lines. A nursing home worker north of Chicago who wished to stay anonymous tells ABC News, quote, we don't have anything, not even hand sanitizer. We're told that if we want to wear masks, we had to bring our own. In Georgia, the state is investigating possible outbreaks at 47 nursing homes. The National Guard is now cleaning facilities near Atlanta. In Colorado, where 10 nursing homes are reporting an outbreak, Gretchen Gordon says wearing a mask can sometimes make her job more difficult, especially when treating patients with dementia. So this is an interesting shift for me because sometimes the wife forgets that the coronavirus is a thing and she'll 
you know, freak out that I have a mask on. It makes her uncomfortable. Back in New York, the hospital workers already facing dire shortages are sharing this warning. If frontline caregivers are sick, are dying, there won't be anyone left to take care of the public. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. It is now 541 and still 70 degrees. Up next, the coronavirus pandemic is having a big impact on the workforce, as you well know. More on what help is available for those affected. Welcome back. It's now 544. Unemployment numbers across the country and state are reaching staggering levels. The coronavirus pandemic has crippled our workforce. RJ Marquez details the latest figures and tells us what help Governor Greg Abbott says is out there. The amount of Texans that have applied for unemployment relief has skyrocketed. The Texas Tribune reports there has been a more than 1600% increase in applications over the past two weeks. The overall numbers are grim. Last week, 275,597 Texans applied for unemployment. Compare that to just over 16,000 who filed in the week ending of March 14th of this year. March 21st was the first week where there was a spike in numbers. More than 155,000 Texans who were out of work applied for unemployment. And several people say it's been difficult to get through to the Texas Workforce Commission. The commission has been overwhelmed with applications and calls. Governor Greg Abbott addressed some of those issues on case at 12 Thursday afternoon. He acknowledged it has been a challenge. There has never before been this many people applying for unemployment benefits. So what we have done, we hired several hundred additional additional new staff to help respond and then we move staff from other agencies to help respond and so we are accelerating our timetable. Before the coronavirus pandemic swept the state, some of Texas's worst weeks for unemployment was at the height of the Great Recession which saw over 49,000 Texans file and in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey when 63,700 filed. That pales in comparison to what we are seeing now, but Abbott urges Texans to continue to call the Workforce Commission and wants to assure them they will get help. You're not going to be denied your unemployment benefits simply because you have not yet been able to make your application. But even better news, uh, the, uh, the unemployment benefits that you will be receiving will be more than what you would have otherwise received because of this additional money that's been appropriated by the United States Congress that will expand unemployment, unemployment benefits in Texas. The situation is just as bad around the country. The Labor Department released new numbers that show unemployment claims surge to 6.6 .6 million. That doubled the previous record, which was just set last week. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Meanwhile, Walt Disney is one of the company's furloughing employees. The move applies to U.S. employees. It's also for executives and hourly workers who aren't in unions. Furloughed workers will get to keep their benefits and can collect unemployment. Disney bleeding money amid the pandemic. Its theme parks are shut down around the world. Its cruises are suspended and some of its film releases have been delayed. Disney also owns ESPN, a network that now has no live sports to air pretty much. NASA is planning to study how the sun creates space weather. The new mission is called Sun Radio Interferometer Space Experiment or Sunrise, which I'm going to stick with from now on. It will use six satellites, each about the size of a toaster oven, and they will work together to form one large radio telescope. The data will get, they gather will help scientists determine what initiates and accelerates the sun's bursts of radiation. The mission costs more than $62 million. It's expected to launch in July of 2023. Oh, here we go. Duncan hoping sweetness can help people during these trying times. Every Friday in April, the company has given free donuts to members of its rewards program if they purchase a drink. The promotion intended to run only through March, but Duncan has extended it through April to bring a little extra joy to the end now, of the week. Now, I'm not sure if our producer did this on purpose, but that story comes right before we go to Officer Solis. Oh, oh. Well, <laughs> that's the oh. Yeah, yeah, we like donuts. We like donuts. All right, we got two accidents out there. It's starting to get wet and it's starting to affect traffic. So uh, let's go to this accident first. This is going to be westbound Wurzbach Parkway at Whitmore Road. Now, this is just a minor accident, but still I want to emphasize how dangerous Wurzbach Parkway is when it is raining. Uh, this is a one vehicle accident. It gets very slick on that parkway. You need to control your speed. It's very curvy and windy there. Please be careful when you are driving down this parkway when it rains. Dealing with this one vehicle accident, this is going to be eastbound U.S. Highway 90 at 
no, to the northbound I-35 south on ramp right there at the shoulder. So uh, just keep that in mind when it's there. We're going to try to get some transguide footage of that. I haven't seen it yet there, so still working on getting that footage. Let's take a look at other places outside. 35 in Randolph still looks slick outside. 1604 in Bronze still looking good, but look, you can see the reflection of the water on the roadway. And 151 in 410, traffic starting to pick up just a little bit there. So uh, just be careful in 90 in Medeo Creek. All right, well, we want everyone to get into work safely, okay? You know, that's interesting when you talk about uh, Wurzbach Parkway there by Wetmore and Nacogdoches mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the, uh, turned out to be like the Fine Silver Curve when it's wet over there. Yes, yeah. a lot of accidents in that yeah. area. You'll probably hear us say it a lot. Me and Mark is Wurzbach <laughs> Parkway, especially when it rains. It's always wet. Yeah. Yeah, it's always dangerous. Slick break. What you got behind you? Uh, yeah, beautiful picture. Now, obviously, this picture was taken a couple of days ago because it is nice and sunny. And, you know, we're going to have some gorgeous wildflowers coming up in your gardens and everything else with all the rain that is in the forecast. And that's a, just a great picture there up in uh, Spring Branch. So, uh, may not be the best weekend to go for a drive, but, uh, you know, even if it's rainy out, you could take a little uh, drive around, see some of the, the wildflowers, obviously drive carefully this weekend. Tomorrow may be not the good day for it, though, perhaps on Sunday, just because we have potential for heavy rain tomorrow. Kind of murky out there this morning, as you saw in some of those transguide cameras as well. Because of the, the rain, the mist, all the humidity hanging around there, we don't have a lot of rain being picked up on radar right now. Just a few scattered light showers here and there. One uh, heading into in toward Medina Lake picked up about a third of an inch out there at the uh, airport officially yesterday. I've see some folks picked up more than that with a couple of thunderstorms that did pop up and there's a whole lot more in the offing 70 right now in town mid to upper 60s and we have the potential for severe storms later on today storm prediction center has us under a slight risk so that'd be about a two on the scale marginal being number one high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with this and it covers all of our area and it's as it's a classic we say uh springtime situation with two opposing air masses coming on in here because we've got a potent front which is moving down in. So here's the uh, rapid update computer model which has scattered rain around the area this morning and then that front moves on through later on this afternoon and toward the late afternoon. That's when those heavier thunderstorms are going to be developing in toward dinner time and then after that it'll kind of ease a little bit. I mean, we'll still have some rain around here, but it may calm somewhat or, or wane just a little bit. Then tomorrow we are going to be seeing more of these uh, heavier thunderstorms move on in here and some heavier downpours. This is a different computer model going a little bit further into the future, and that's when we could see some some heavier rain. It's 27 right now in Amarillo. That's the actual air temperature, 33 in Lubbock. And so that colder air, we're not going to get that cold, obviously, but that colder air is moving on in here. And so temperatures are going to be dropping down when that front moves through. And right now, the timing of it looks like it's going to be about 4 or 5 o'clock. So I think by 5 o'clock and then toward dinner time, temperatures are going to be dropping off. We'll be at 76 at noon, get up to about 78 degrees by mid to late afternoon. And then the uh, front moves on through here. So I'm going for 60 right around 5 o'clock this afternoon, 5, 5, 36 o'clock, and then continuing to cool down. Be 47 tomorrow morning. So well below normal, and it's going to be a cold day just because, well, not only the temperatures, but also the rain thrown in there. There's actually one computer model that has us only about 50 tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit warmer than that. So I'm going for 57 for a high and then 65 Sunday and back to the 70s and 80s by the first middle part of next week. But Dave had mentioned we could light a fire in the morning. It's Ooh. true. Yeah, I mean, only in the mid upper 50s throughout the afternoon. And rainy. Have a raw day, yeah. I like that. Good movie day. Kind of strange. 553. <laughs> David. <laughs> Coming up next, more on uh, Good Samaritan, who's doing what he can to give back to nurses who are on the front line of the coronavirus outbreak. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we are tracking all the big headlines this morning on the coronavirus crisis. The number of cases worldwide now topping one million, nearly a quarter of them here in the U.S. Hospitals are buckling under the pressure and new concerns about health care workers, safety, how the dose of the virus you're exposed to may affect you. That's all coming up, plus much more only on GMA. We'll see you all soon. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center will continue to, to its blood drive today at Stevens High School Gymnasium. It's in the 600 block of North Ellison Drive. It's going to be happening from 9 this morning until 2 this afternoon. Remember to make an appointment by visiting southtexasblood.org or 
You can call that number 210-731-5590. We've got all the information for you as well on our website. Just go to KSAT.com. As we heard, healthcare workers are risking their lives to care for patients infected with the novel coronavirus. So a man in Detroit wanted to do something nice for the nurses. Alan Marshall had been saving up for something he wanted for himself, but instead he decided to buy gas for the nurses this week. Marshall says he just loves nurses and the care they provide and just wants them to know they are appreciated. Michigan has one of the worst outbreaks of the COVID-19 in the country. Coming up in the next hour, buzzing, chirping, or ringing. Sounds like an alarm clock. Text message alert usually makes you head straight for your cell phone. Later on GMSA, new research indicates text messaging might be an A-plus way to keep parents engaged in their child's learning. Plus, more on your traffic and your weather. Right there, it's traffic and weather. Wet roads. So far, things are pretty smooth. Officer Solis has got that for you. Mike's got your forecast. Things are going to be Wild and woolly this weekend. Get ready. A local nursing home is in the middle of a coronavirus outbreak. And later today, we're expecting to learn more about the cause and what's being done to help people who live there. President Trump issuing new orders to make desperately needed equipment for health care workers. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Outside with live cam, it is wet, it's going to get wetter, and it's going to get colder. Mike Hoster Hage has your forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, Yay! April 3rd. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. I cannot believe we are talking about a cold front in April. Not a cool front, but a cold front. Yes, Mike, I mean, you're wow. saying it's going to be chilly. Yeah, it's going to be cold. It's below freezing right now. It's in the 20s right now up in the panhandle, one of the portions of the panhandle. Wowza. We won't get that cold, <laughs> but it's coming on in here. We're very, very warm this morning. We're uh, right around the upper 60s, low 70s around here. Kind of murky looking as well. The roads are definitely damp from the rain we had yesterday, and there's been uh, some light showers kind of moving on through the area uh, this morning. There's a few more that are developing well down there just coming across uh, from the river from Mexico in toward Catula and even a couple of down along the, the coastal plain and then these few little uh, scattered showers here and there. So it's not much this morning, but we are going to be seeing kind of the rain start to fill in. It's going to start to pick up a little bit more and then things are going to uh, get pretty rough later on this afternoon. There's the potential of that 66 in Helota, 69 Bolverde and 70 out there at the airport. And we've got a lot of oak. It has been after dropping down dramatically a few days ago, it's been slowly going up and up and up and mold is going up and this is going to be on the high side for the uh, probably foreseeable future given the fact uh, we've got a lot of uh, rain in the forecast. So temperatures this morning we will continue to kind of creep up through the 70s not a huge jump in temperatures obviously we'll make it up into the mid 70s by noon more showers even a couple of thunderstorms developing and then Watch the numbers as I put this into motion because we'll continue to go up to about the upper 70s and then all of a sudden it's going to be dropping off as that front moves on through here by a good 15, maybe close to 20 degrees. That front comes in here late in the afternoon and that's what's going to be sparking some of those stronger thunderstorms. As a matter of fact, uh, the potential is there for severe weather, high winds and hail being the biggest threats. And this is from the Storm Prediction Center has the entire area under the slight risk for severe weather. That's going to be up through about early evening hours, then perhaps a lull in the action. But rain's going to pick back up again tomorrow. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. And I know we had a couple of accidents earlier. Anything big out there right now? Yeah, still the one accident, Mike, on a 90 and 35. So if you're going eastbound 90, right before, right there on the on ramp from 35 to 35 north, the shoulder, we got an accident here. Uh, so let's show you. Um, so yeah, so you're going eastbound 90, you have that ramp to 35 north right there. The accident's right down that ramp. It looks like a wrecker is on scene and they're working on getting this accident out of the way any minute now. So that's good news, especially if you have to go there on your morning commute. All right, look at these drive times. 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604, only 12 minutes. And if you're on 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 13 minutes. So really good times there. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide. Still wet in a lot of places down um, in, in the city. 37 Tolado Creek, light traffic, 281 in Loop 410. Same very light traffic there. 
Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Ten and Hebrew. You can see the reflection from from uh, the slickness of the water there. Just please be careful. And 35 at Splashtown. Traffic's very light to moderate, but like I told everybody else uh, earlier, just please be careful when driving. When the roads are slick, keep your distance. No heavy braking. We don't want you skidding all over the all over the roadway and keep your distance. All right. Well, I hope everyone has a great morning. Dave Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Officer Solis. There has been an explosion of COVID-19 cases at the Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center here in San Antonio. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says 59 more cases were confirmed yesterday, which brings the total in the nursing home to 73. One person has died in the nursing home as well. KSET 12 looked at the records for the nursing home and found that the U.S. government rated it much below average. We found that it was fined more than $60,000 and cited for dozens of violations last year. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says there will be an update on the outbreak in the nursing home later on today. Now, the outbreak at the nursing home will push the total number of cases in Bear County above 300. The mayor says the county is, has reported 254 cases of COVID-19. They did that yesterday, but that number did not include the 59 additional cases at that nursing home, which will be added to today's totals. The increasing numbers come as the federal government recognizes Texas as one of the next hotspots in the U.S. for coronavirus. Governor Greg Abbott will hold a statewide press conference today to give an update on the pandemic in Texas. It will take place at 2.30 this afternoon. There are nearly 5,000 cases and 70 deaths in Texas. We will be airing the press conference live on KSAT 12 and streaming it on KSAT.com. We also have all the latest information in our afternoon and evening newscasts. Texas Med Clinic says they will test any patient who has symptoms of the coronavirus, which include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. San Antonio City lawmakers say the changes could be officially announced next week. Up to this point, med clinics only tested certain patients. Those included health workers, first responders, and people who were 65 and older with underlying health conditions, and only if they were exhibiting symptoms. The measures are being put into places and cases continue to grow around South Texas. $14 million in federal recovery grants will come to San Antonio. Texas Senator John Cornyn says funding was approved by Congress last month. The money can be used to fund more testing, medical equipment, small business support, and much more. It comes as the city is expecting to see less money coming from the sales tax, river barge tours, and hotel occupancy tax. Early projections put an operating budget shortfall between 62 and $81 million for this fiscal year. City leaders say parks across the Alamo City will be closed Easter weekend. During yesterday's city council meeting, a city attorney said they will close to prevent people from camping in the parks, which is a longtime San Antonio tradition. Right now, city leaders are working out an exception for greenways and trails so people can get some exercise over the weekend. They say they will not be able to camp in those areas if they are open, though. An emergency rental assistance program is in place to help unemployed San Antonians pay rent during the pandemic. The San Antonio Apartment Association, the city, and several philanthropic organizations partnered to make it happen. To qualify, you must provide written proof of your unemployment status. And as the need for ventilators continue to grow around the country, some local doctors created a way to help more people. They come up with they have come up with a 3D printer printed a splitter template. It would allow a single ventilator to treat more than one patient at a time. The template is available for people to use if they need it. However, national health officials do not recommend this method and push for other options during the crisis. Many high school seniors are worried about their future and how the coronavirus will impact it. Local college advisors say more students are questioning if they'll be able to afford college if the virus causes a recession. Schools around San Antonio say they're worried these fears may cause a drop in college attendance, which can hurt many San Antonians' futures. The death toll from the coronavirus is rising around the country, and the federal stockpile of masks and ventilators is nearly gone. President Donald Trump is now stepping up the Defense Production Act, ordering companies to manufacture those desperately needed supplies. ABC's Inez de la Quartera has more. Good morning. President Trump is issuing new orders to make desperately needed equipment. As the governor of New York reveals, ventilators could run out in six days. This morning, the number of infections in New York approaching 100,000, makeshift morgues being built around New York City. The governor warns it could be another month before the state reaches its peak number of cases, but ventilators could run out in less than a week. If a person comes in and needs a ventilator and you don't have a ventilator, the person dies. 
President Trump now announcing he's stepping up the Defense Production Act, ordering companies to manufacture those desperately needed ventilators, though FEMA tells Congress they won't be available until late June. We have over 100,000 being built right now or soon to be started. Trump also using the Defense Production Act to push the company 3M to produce more face masks. To stop the spread of the virus, New York is now following Los Angeles, urging people to wear non-medical masks or face coverings in public. And soon, the White House is expected to issue similar guidance for more Americans, but with a warning. The most important thing is the social distancing. And we don't want people to get an artificial sense of protection because they're behind a mask. When it comes to financial help, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says Americans will start to see direct deposit relief payments from the government in the next two weeks. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. The first major drug trial for the coronavirus could start next week in Detroit. The Henry Ford Health System is administering the double-blind study to see whether an anti-malarial drug could prevent frontline workers from getting the virus. 3,000 volunteers will get once-a-week doses for eight weeks. Some patients will get the drug, others will get placebos. Volunteers will then be contacted weekly to see if they're showing any symptoms. That if you gave our health care workers and our first responders hydroxychloroquine doses early on, could it prevent the disease? Or if they do get the disease, could it be milder symptoms? And there's only one way to do that scientifically, and that's with a blind study. Right now, there are no treatments for COVID-19, but this drug has been given to patients around the world with mixed results. And remember, we have more information on all of these stories right now on KSAT.com. You can also follow the latest updates from our local, state, and federal governments online and on our KSAT app. New this morning, a woman is in the hospital after a hit and run. Police say it happened at the intersection of Roosevelt and Mission around 11 o'clock last night, which is right across the street from Mission San Jose. Officers say a witness saw a driver in a white vehicle hit the woman and then drive off. The woman was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. Police are still searching for the driver. And San Antonio police are looking for a shooter on the southwest side. A police sergeant says a man walked up to an officer with a gunshot wound in the 4,000 block of Southwest Military Drive. Happened around 2.30 this morning. He says the shooting happened at the Caltex Mobile Home Park. The man is in critical condition at Bamsey, and police are still investigating. It's 6.11. It's 70 degrees. A sneeze is enough to get someone worried nowadays. We're going to check out the difference between allergies and COVID-19. And not everything happening in the world as a result of COVID-19. We'll take a look at some of the best local stories that have nothing to do with the coronavirus. Coming up after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam. We've got a chance of some severe storms moving into our area later on today. We'll get an update from Mike. Welcome back, 615. It has been another week of coronavirus coverage, but not all of the news is bad. If you visited our website, you may have noticed some other more lighthearted stories. Our Erica Hernandez gives us a KSET.com Week in Review. Easter is fast approaching and this year's celebration will be different. In case you need to venture out to a store, KSAT.com has a list of big chains that will be closed on Easter Sunday. Businesses closed include HEB, Costco, Sam's Club, and Target. Businesses open include CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, and Whole Foods. Some good news in San Antonio. In March, Animal Care Services says more than 600 pets were adopted and an additional 118 pets left with foster families. The good news doesn't end there. More than 900 other animals left with local rescue partners. To view pets that are available for adoption, check out the ACS website. Right now is the perfect time of year for wildflower pictures. If you live near any, we want to see your photos. You can upload them to our wildflower gallery. Already we've seen some amazing pics. San Antonio artist Rafael Gonzalez is getting some laughs after posting his rendition of Loteria cards called Pandemic Loteria. He says he created the cards to bring a sense of comfort, family, and fun during the coronavirus pandemic. 
And finally, April Fools. The San Antonio Zoo played a prank on San Antonio Media Wednesday, including us here at KSAT 12. We got fooled into thinking they actually took their elephants to the San Antonio River for a swim. FYI, this did not happen, and the elephants are doing well at the San Antonio Zoo. For more on all these stories, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Ha uh ha, -huh, that's a good one. Can you imagine some elephants? Walking around in the San Antonio River. I cannot imagine that, <laughs> but I think that we all needed a little joke and a laugh, and I think that was awesome. That's pretty good. Not bad. Hello. All right, here we go. Green. Look, a lot of green on the screen. Always good, huh? But we are working on one accident that just came out right now. It's going to be a one vehicle accident. It's going to be eastbound North Loop 1604 East at West Green Mountain Road. So this is going eastbound. Um, this looks like a vehicle hydroplane there on the highway, meaning the roadways are very slick. Please control your speed when going to work this morning. If you have to, it's very dangerous out there. Keep your distance because uh, we're getting a lot of one vehicle accidents today. Day. This is the third one. All right, let's take a look outside. 10 in Loop 1604 looking good. 10 in UTSA definitely uh, getting uh, traffic is definitely coming up. Light to moderate there. 35 and 410 still light traffic, not too bad. And uh, 37 in Salado Creek same is looking very, very light to moderate. All right, Mike. Well, definitely traffic starting to feel the effects of, of the rain. Should we expect to be should we be expecting rain all day? Yeah, yeah, all day and pretty much for the next uh, basically the next week. More on that in a second. First of all, uh, as Erica was talking about, you know, those great wildflower pictures, beautiful one of the bee which is pollinating that flower and make sure you send in those pictures on the uh, if you want to send in KSAT connect pictures, you have to download or refresh the KSAT weather app and it's right down there at the bottom. Also, that's good to have on hand. Not only can you track where any of the rain and storms are later on today, but you're also going to be getting some of the alerts from us uh, later on this afternoon as warranted. All right, today is a, a kind of an infamous day. It is the anniversary of the latest freeze we've ever had officially out there at the airport got down to 31 degrees in 1997. We are not going to be getting that cold. However, we got a big cold front moving on through here, probably one similar to what happened way back in 1987. So it is murky out there, as Nick was talking about. We've got some damp roads. As you can see, 410 is kind of damp over there by the airport. We've had a few light showers around this morning, and now there are a couple more developing down to the uh, southwest and down to the southeast. And nothing is really showing up on radar in and around town right now, but there may be some mist and drizzle. And rain is going to continue to develop and be sort of widespread and fill in throughout the morning and afternoon hours. Mid upper 60s low 70s right now even warmer than what it was yesterday and obviously way above normal. We have the risk for severe weather later on today. Storm Prediction Center has us in that slight risk. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. Here's a couple of computer models. This first one, the rapid update model, has some scattered showers around the area throughout the afternoon. And then this line right in here is the front moving on through. And by late afternoon is when we're going to be seeing the potential for those uh, severe storms. And we'll still keep some rain around into the evening hours. Different computer model, about the same situation. And as you can see right there, that's the front. And that's going to be coming through about mid-afternoon. And that's when we see the potential again for some of the uh, stronger storms. Now, it looks like things may kind of ease a little bit as far as rain in the overnight hours, then pick back up tomorrow. And by midday tomorrow, that's when we could see some potentially heavy rain around here. Um, and maybe some flooding in spots is going to be uh, an issue tomorrow. 26 degrees right now in Amarillo. It has been cooling down in the past couple of hours, and so that front's working its way in our direction. And when it comes through, yeah, temperatures are definitely going to be dropping off late this afternoon. So 76 degrees today at noon, warm, humid showers, a couple of thunderstorms developing. We will continue to go up to about 78, and then by 5 o'clock dinner time or so, temperatures are going to be dropping down as the front moves on through the area, dropping off a good 15 degrees or more as it moves in here. Wind will shift it around to the north to north east and we'll have thunderstorms leading up to that point. Still some rain in behind it. We get down to 47 degrees tomorrow morning and only 57. That's what I'm going for for a high temperature tomorrow and we will see uh, potentially a couple of heavier uh, downpours tomorrow and then still some rain in the first half of next week, but warming back up. A lot of times when it's like cold like that and it's rainy, it feels even colder. Yes, yeah, it is. does. So, because the moisture in the air kind of yeah, it draws, so. it conducts the heat away from your body because dryer doesn't yeah. conduct heat. So. Does this kind of weather make it more fun for your job? Uh, 
Well, as opposed to the summertime. Yeah, when it's just the same about, old, same you know, old, same old. 97, hot, humid, 97, <laughs> hot, humid. You know, something different to talk about. So we don't, you know, I, I never like severe weather nests. Yeah, we don't want the severe, but the rain and the cold and this, rain the little and the cold, bit change. The fronts moving through and trying to figure out the timing of the fronts yeah. and everything. Yeah, that uh, makes it interesting. It and sure does. Thank you. 31 Mike. in 1987. Yep. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Do you? Probably can. I was do. not here at the time. Me yeah, I was. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's right here. I don't know, I'll think about it. See if I remember that day. 622 now, everybody. It's that time of year again where many of us are suffering from seasonal allergies. In today's GMA First Look, we're going to look at the differences between the common sniffles and symptoms of the coronavirus. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a hot dog or kolache. We are Circle K. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, a health concern for so many. How to know the difference between seasonal allergies and the early symptoms of COVID-19. Experts say about 20 million Americans suffer from allergies every year, and the season could last for four months. This map highlighting the parts of the country that are most challenging places to live with allergies. About 90% of patients with COVID-19 will present with a fever. The other main differentiating factor is sneezing. Sneezing is very common in allergies. It has not been reported in covid if you're worried or unsure of your symptoms, we would recommend contacting your doctor. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you all the important differences to look out for. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live with what we are now learning about the coronavirus. With your GMA First Look, I'm Deborah Roberts, ABC News, New York. It is 626 and 70 degrees. It's been 70 degrees for like three hours now. I know. What's up with that? Let's go up to 71 or down to 69 or something. Please, Mother Nature, help him out. He's very frustrated. Coronavirus hotspots are growing across the country. We're going to see how the federal government is trying to contain them. And the number of people applying for unemployment benefits, astonishingly high. We'll see the new record that was set this week coming up. All these drivers are waiting for their chance to say, fill her up. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They're not here for gas, but for the San Antonio Food Bank's mega distribution. I'll tell you more about it. San Antonio is getting a lot of money to help its public transportation system. We'll see why it's important for those fighting the coronavirus. And outside with live cab. Ugh. 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 It is going to get ugh. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's Friday, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a long week. It is Friday, everybody. You made it. Yep. It's a wet Friday, too, and that could be affecting the roadways. It is affecting Wurzbach Parkway, third accident on Wurzbach Parkway Ooh. in the last hour. Yeah. What's going on over there? It's a very dangerous That's parkway. that nasty spot, right? Is yeah. Wetmore and Wur Wur Wurzbach Parkway and Wetmore, yes. Just and people need to get area. used to this rain because it's sticking around. Yeah, and it's going to get heavier as the day rolls on, and things could get uh, pretty nasty later on this afternoon. And as you can see, as uh, to quote David, kind of bleh, out there by the airport as of right now, and uh, the, definitely the road, roads are wet, left over from the rain we had yesterday and more rain. We had a few of these light showers moving on through, and now a few more are, as you can see, are starting to develop. It's kind of 
filling in a little bit more, a little bit more uh, better aerial coverage from Eagle Pass over in toward Uvalde, almost in by Honda, Hondo, pardon me, and then also by uh, down around the, the coastal plain, but not much in and around town, just a few light little scattered sprinkles. But again, that rain will continue to fill in and move across the area uh, throughout the rest of the morning and then this afternoon. Yeah, temperatures have been holding steady right around 70, obviously way above normal by a good, uh, say, 15 degrees or more than that, and uh, some 60s elsewhere. Oak is on the high side. Uh, the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, 45 minutes or so. Mold, I suspect, is really going to be jumping up, and it's going to be jumping up over the next couple of days just because we will see a lot of rain around here. So very mild this morning with some showers, showers, thunderstorms, and some are going to be severe with high winds and hail. Then it's going to turn colder. We've got a really potent front moving on through here late this afternoon. Temperatures will drop down after getting up into about the upper 70s. Cold, wet tomorrow and also the potential for more heavy rain tomorrow. Then we'll start to warm back up starting Sunday into next week, but still more rain around here. And Storm Prediction Center does have us under the slight risk for severe weather around the entire area. And this is going to be late this afternoon into about dinner time it is pretty much the, the best window of opportunity for that. More on the weekend for forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, that one spot is just notorious, isn't it? Yeah, it's just uh, it's dangerous all over the place there. Wurzbach Parkway Jones to Wetmore. That parkway is dangerous when it rains. Please, if you have to go to work through Wurzbach Parkway west and eastbound on your way to work, please be very careful. Control your speeds. Uh, have distance from the car in front of you because this parkway gets very dangerous very fast. All right, well, this is the accident. This is an accident here. Westbound Wurzbach Parkway at Jones Maltzberger Road. Looks like records on scene here trying to clear that one up. Then just east of there, Westbound Wurzbach Parkway at Wetmore Road. Our second accident here already at this intersection. We have another accident accident there. Looks like a one vehicle accident again, lost control and uh, spun out there. OK, we're dealing with this just north eastbound North Loop 1604 East at West Green Mountain Road. Another one vehicle accident where the vehicle lost control. So it's very slippery out there. It is dangerous. Y'all, please be careful when driving uh, out there. 10 and Hildebrand. Look, you can see it's a little wet there. 10 at La Quintera. Uh, very light traffic there. That's good. Um, 10 and Loop 1604. Those eastbound lanes starting to get a little bit moderate, but not too bad. And uh, 10 at UTSA the same. Well, just please be careful when everyone get into work safely. And like I said, just please control your speed, watch your distance and don't break heavy. All right, Dave Leslie, back to you. Thank you, sir. Hopefully people will heed your advice. You know, people are expected to arrive by the hundreds this morning to take advantage of the San Antonio Food Bank's latest food giveaway. They call it a mega distribution. Our Katrina Weber is live at Brook City Base, where it will begin in just a few hours. And it looks like people are already lining up, Katrina. Yeah, I'll tell you, with the last count that we took, there were probably about two dozen cars in line, a lot more now. Many of these people have been here since very early this morning. They got here hours ago for this food distribution, which doesn't even start until 10 o'clock this morning. That line of cars goes all the way down the block and then around that corner. Now, this is the second food bank distribution like this, allowing people in need to get help without leaving the safety of their cars. The food bank has found there are a lot of families that need help during this coronavirus pandemic, but they emphasize that people cannot just show up here. Pre-registration is required, and that is done through the website you see on your screen. Now, they tell us that all of the slots for today are filled, but there are some openings next week on Tuesday and Thursday. Again, you have to head to the food bank's website to pre-register. Now, they are expecting to feed about 2,200 families today during this mega distribution, but they tell us next Thursday will be the mother of all these mega distributions. They're expecting about 5,000 families to show up uh, to get the services that they are offering. Reporting live at Brooks City Base, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The U.S. Secretary of Transportation says San Antonio will receive more than $93 million to help public transportation systems around the city. The funds will help the city respond to the coronavirus pandemic. The secretary says public transportation systems like VIA help first responders and health care workers and help people who need to see a doctor. Funds will help support operating costs, preventing layoffs as much as possible and keeping all of the buses clean. A local law firm is offering free simple will service to health care professionals and first responders during the pandemic. Grable Grimshaw Morrow Law Firm will offer the service until April 17th. They say they're doing this so nobody fighting the pandemic on the front lines has to worry about their personal affairs should something happen to them. 
To learn more, you can contact GGM Law by email or phone with the information right there on your screen. The Texas Diaper Bank will provide free diapers to families who are economically impacted by COVID-19. The Diaper Bank says it will provide 150 diapers per child or a six-month supply of diapers for seniors who need them. Hoarding, job loss, and stay-at-home orders all make it harder for people to get the diapers they need. To register, just head to TexasDiaperBank.org. New York is no doubt the epicenter of COVID-19 in the U.S., but as each day passes, a new reality, more hot spots emerging. What changes the curve is a new Detroit, a new Chicago, a new New Orleans, a new Colorado. We're watching very carefully because we see that you can go from this to this very quickly. Why the spikes? It comes down to who was still moving around in recent days. This New York Times map shows the country color coded by who was allowed to travel just last week. Those gray areas are places where stay at home orders were already in place. But those areas of red? Business as usual, from state officials late to restrict travel. Georgia finally issued its stay at home order Wednesday. The governor making this shocking statement yesterday. What we've been telling people from directives from the CDC for weeks now that if you start feeling bad, stay home. Uh, those individuals could have been infecting people before they ever felt bad. Well, we didn't know that until the last 24 hours. But the CDC warned about that risk months ago. One rural area of Georgia is erupting with cases. It just shows you, it, you know, you're not safe in rural America, small urban. This isn't just for the big cities. Uh, it's for all of the United States. And in Louisiana, this sobering chart showing cases soaring to nearly 10,000, a 42% jump in one day. In Volusia County, Florida, northeast of Orlando, beaches were still open until last night. Florida has reported a 27% increase in its death toll in one day. In growing concern in Colorado, the governor writing a letter to Vice President Pence saying the crisis is far worse than he imagined and saying Colorado's death rate is rising faster than any other state. And that was ABC's Kimberly Brooks reporting. In your morning consumer news, claims for unemployment benefits skyrocketed to a new record as companies closed their doors in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. First time claims this week hit 6.6 .6 million. That's double the number from just a week ago. About 6% of the labor force has filed. And at the end of February, it was just point, it was just 3%. Prices have been on the rise, fueled by hopes of a possible end to the price war between Saudi Arabia and Russia. Prices closed up 25% after President Trump tweeted he expected both countries to cut production by millions of barrels a day. Saudi officials say they are considering those cuts. It is 6.39 and still 70 degrees. I'm sorry, David. Getting bored with a 70 thing. I know you are. Well, buzzing, chirping, or ringing, a text message alert usually makes you head straight for your cell phone. After the break, new research indicates text messaging might be an A-plus way to keep parents engaged in their child's learning. Welcome back at 643. Parents often have tremendous demands on their time and their attention. And finding a quick, effective way to ensure they have information they need can help support their young child's language, math, and science skills. Now there is growing evidence that help might just be a text message away. Here's the evidence. A sudden chime or beep from your phone? It's an interruption that could actually keep your day on track. I'm managing calendars for so many people that um, that's just an extra little, hey, by the way. New research shows certain text messages are helpful for families. Noah Goodman is an educational researcher studying the issue. Each week they get a text message uh, on their phone, and that text message has links to videos and activities. For six weeks, 95 families got the instructions for environmental and science projects. Everything from monitoring home water usage to making crafts from recycled materials. Parents told researchers that getting videos and activities through text messages made it easy to engage in fun projects for their kids. They have their phones attached to their hips, and, and so they always knew where to find the activities. They didn't have to uh, keep track of any paper or anything like that. In another study, researchers evaluated an eight-month-long text messaging program for parents of preschoolers. 
parents receive specific activities that can improve skills and be a part of the daily routine. Things like pointing out the first letter of a child's name on signs and magazines, giving parents tools to teach language or learn about the environment. You can go from not recycling to recycling in a day. Researchers found kids whose parents received the texts were specific tips were more motivated to complete certain tasks. And their children also scored higher on an early liter literacy, I can talk, assessment. It's Friday. Oh, hallelujah, it's Friday, but it's a mess on the roadways, yeah. Nick. Yeah, the northeast side of town is just getting slammed with accidents. All right, not to confuse anybody, but I know I was talking about Wurzbach Park earlier, but we have an accident on Harry Wurzbach Road and northeast Loop 410. Harry Wurzbach Road is going towards Fort Sam, that area. So uh, that's the uh, accident SAPD is currently working on right now. Still working on this accident, westbound Wurzbach Parkway at jones Maltzberger Road, and just east of there, westbound Wurzbach Parkway at Wetmore Road. Remember, please be careful when going down Wurzbach Parkway. All right, another accident just north east uh, there, eastbound North Loop 1604 at West Green Mountain Road. Uh, that was a one vehicle accident. That one should be get, getting cleared up here pretty soon. All right, let's take a look outside now at the Trans Guide. 10 in Hildebrand, that's uh, looking uh, very good. Very light traffic. 10 at La Quintera, uh, same, very light traffic. Uh, roadways don't look as wet there. 10 at uh, Loop 1604, big puddle on the shoulder of that uh, eastbound lane. And uh, 10 at UTSA Boulevard, the same. Uh, light to moderate traffic, but definitely not as bad as it can get. But it is going to get worse later on today. Say, like for you. Yeah, uh, not we've as got bad some. Going to get. Pardon me. Not as bad as it's going to get. And we're right. talking uh, about uh, lightning and possible hail. Is it, yeah, hail and high winds that okay. would constitute severe, uh, severe thunderstorm. And we do have the potential for severe thunderstorms. A very small chance. You know, in any situation like this, you could get a small tornado to spin up. It's not very likely in this situation, though. It's going to be high winds and hail, and then heavy rain. <laughs> also thrown in with some of these bigger thunderstorms and that's also going to be the situation tomorrow. First of all, just a nice picture to kind of take your mind off things. Bullpen and blue bonnets at sunset. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, it's kind of murky out there this morning. And as you can see, the roads are definitely damp as Nick has been talking about. So just to kind of take it easy, even though there's not as much traffic on the roads, just Settle out. We do have, we had a few showers moving on through here. Now more starting to develop down there to the uh, southwest and also on uh, the southeast along the coastal plain. And the rain will continue to kind of move on in and sort of fill in throughout the day. And some of those showers are heading in toward Divine as of right now. Yeah, temperatures have not moved all morning long, at least as far as the hourly readings are concerned. We're still at 70 in the upper 60s elsewhere. We have the slight risk for severe weather today, according to the Storm Prediction Center. That's kind of number two on the scale. And again, it's high winds and hail, which are going to be the biggest threats from this today and like late this afternoon. And then heavy rain is going to be the threat, to especially well, with some of those thunderstorms, but then especially tomorrow. So we have scattered rain around here throughout the rest of today. This is just a, one of these computer models. And then we'll start to see more of the thunderstorms develop later on this afternoon. This is when things are potentially going to get nasty, and that's going to be in toward about dinner time. We'll still have a few showers left over in the overnight hours. And then now this is a different computer model, but it's pretty much an agreement as far as the timing and the intensity of some of these thunderstorms mid to late afternoon when they're really going to start to get going here in toward uh, the evening hours about dinner time and then tomorrow uh, we'll still have some rain around in the morning, but it's by about midday when we're going to see the potential for some of that heavy rain around here. We're going to be seeing widespread one, two inches of rain and then the heavier pockets on top of that, of course, with some of the thunderstorms today. But then I think again tomorrow right around midday. It's 26 right now in Amarillo, 33 in Lubbock. So this is a very unusual, obviously, late season cold front moving on through here. We won't get that cold, but this is going to be about temperatures tomorrow, right around 50s. So I'm going for upper 50s. Some computer models have us even colder than that for a high temperature. I'm going for uh, 57 tomorrow, starting off at the 40s. So it's going to be just a cold, wet, sort of raw day. 76 degrees today at noon. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and then some will become 
potentially severe later on today. I think we peak at about 78 later on, say roughly four o'clock this afternoon, and then the front moves on through here, and we're going to be dropping down a good 15 degrees or more when that front moves on in here. The wind will shift around to the north, and that's when our best potential is for uh, thunderstorms as the front's moving on through here. Tomorrow we start off at 47, get up to 57 for a high temperature. Heavy rain potential tomorrow, and then Sunday we'll still have some rain around 65 degrees, still on the cool side, and we'll finally make it back up into the 70s and 80s by the middle of next week. Still can't rule out a few more showers even into the middle part of next week. A wild weekend. We needed some rain. We're going to get some rain. Grilled cheese and soup tomorrow. Ooh. Okay. Yep. That Let's sounds go. good. Really good. Or grilled peanut butter and jelly. Okay. Which my daughter made for SA Live. Which your daughter, yes, yeah, what Nicole made <laughs> for the day. Well, you bring your peanut butter and jelly outfits over and make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich and what y'all wore yesterday on SA Live. Sounds like a, sounds like a party at your house. But we can't. Social distancing. Social distancing. <laughs> make your own. You say the time and temp comes higher to say in 70 degrees. All right, it's 650 and it's 70 degrees. What's the if temperature, you, Dave? 70. <laughs> if you want to help your child through his or her middle school years, you should pay attention to how they handle stress. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we take a look at some approaches you as a parent can take. Good live cam giving us a look outside. So happy to have you with us on this Friday. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we are tracking all the big headlines this morning on the coronavirus crisis. The number of cases worldwide now topping 1 million, nearly a quarter of them here in the U.S. Hospitals are buckling under the pressure and new concerns about healthcare workers' safety, how the dose of the virus you're exposed to may affect you. That's all coming up, plus much more only on GMA. We'll see you all soon. The San Antonio Food Bank is doing it again, helping out families in a time of need. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. For the second time this week, the Food Bank is holding a mega distribution. Already we have cars lined up by the dozens here, waiting for this distribution, which doesn't even start until 10 o'clock this morning. Now, due to the coronavirus outbreak, the Food Bank has made it possible for people to get help without getting out of their cars. But they stress that people have to pre-register for this food giveaway. You can do that through their website, which is on your screen. They tell us they have filled all of the slots for today, but there are still some openings for next Tuesday and Thursday. And again, you can sign up by going to the food bank's website. Now, there's also a, a need for volunteers, they tell us, and you can also do that through their website. Sign up to help out here at these mega food distributions. Reporting from Brook City Base, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. David. Yes. You're on Leslie. television right now. Leslie. <laughs> Wake up, David. Leslie. It's 70 degrees outside. He's tired of saying 70. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good, Dave. All right, well, still working on this accident. Harry Wurzbach Road, Northeast Loop 410. We have uh, this accident, Westbound Wurzbach Parkway at Wetmore Road. That one on Jones cleared already. And uh, this accident, Eastbound North Loop 1604 at West Green Mountain Road. Please use caution when driving out there. Just taking a look at other parts of the city. It's still very slick and very wet, so please use your distance. Uh, like I said, we don't want no one skidding, and we want everyone to get to work safely. And we do have more rain, which is uh, continuing to kind of move into the area, and we'll see more showers throughout the rest of the morning in this afternoon. Hey, David, it's still 70 degrees out there and uh, we're going to see temperatures getting in the mid to upper 70s and then the front moves through and drops uh, temperatures down considerably. And we do have that slight risk for severe weather later on this afternoon. Of course, Justin's going to have a better grasp on the timing of it today at noon. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And then Adam and Sarah and Katie are going to be having all the latest throughout the rest of the afternoon as those storms move in here. All right. Thanks, Mike. I'm looking forward to this afternoon when the temperature drops. And it's going to. Yeah. Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll see you back here for Good Morning San Antonio at 9. GMA is next.